in a life or death situation, New Breed would have never helped unless it was some, some money involved. That mean all of that prepared for the end times and what if this happened and so it's a joke, man. New Breed is a compulsive liar, fam. And when I drop my movie series, because it's literally going to be a reality TV show. Literally, this whole thing turned into a reality TV show. So I'm here to make concubines great again, damn it. Because I'm tired of the back and forth. And it's time I put my dag on foot down here. Yeah? Now, a concubine is a part-time wife. That's what she is. Okay. In this video, I will break down a few scriptures that prove concubines are considered whoremongers under the new covenant. A concubine is not a part-time wife. I have already expressed through the scriptures in my series titled Religiony is a Packaged Deal that concubines and wives are determined by the state of their virtue sexually, simply whether or not they were virgins when they were engaged to the man. Basically, the elders of the village or city documented a concubine registry that way, her husband had the right to claim her and get paid by the adulterer who laid with her if she played the harlot. Today, that is called soliciting, sex trafficking, pimping, and whoring. And of course, if the wife was caught playing the harlot, she would be stoned to death, which is a patriarchal trademark providing immunity for a man to put his adulterous wife to death. Neither one of these clowns keep this law today. Just because a man says you're a concubine or looks at you as a concubine doesn't mean that brother does not have any love for you. That's not the case at all. I'm serious about my concubines. Nobody lays a hand on my concubines. Let's make that very clear. Nobody touches the chief's concubines. We don't play those type of games. The fact that you are a concubine, the Most High God has given you a second chance. According to the law of Moses, you need the elders of the city to garnish the wages of anyone who touches your concubine. These clowns are so ignorant and defiant against the word of Yah, hypocrites. You say, you know what? Maybe I can work my way up to something better. Because only in our culture, we're in denial. Back in the Chinese culture, do you know how many women started off concubines? who ended up being empresses, ruling for decades. Can you hear the serpent tongue? It's talking about concubines rule for decades. He sounds like the serpent in Genesis chapter three. Ye shall be like God and you will not surely die. Sounds just like the serpent when he said that to Eve. Let's read from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. It says, do not prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a harlot, lest the land fall into harlotry, the land become full of wickedness. Okay, when it talks about the land, it's speaking about the land that Israel was evicted from, okay, because they disobeyed the Most High. They didn't keep the statutes and commandments, his ordinances. Okay, they turned to their idols and committed spiritual adultery. But physically, this is also talking about the woman. The land metaphorically represents her body. Is her body polluted or has she played the harlot? Okay, this is why the scriptures state the head of man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man. So God always parallel his relationship with man to the man's relationship with the woman. You see what I'm saying? So the land refers to the woman's body. Is she a virgin or not during her engagement to the man? Why? Because they was with the right man. Concubines did this. Yes. See, the Chinese culture, there is a whole list of women. A whole entire list of women that were concubines that worked their way up and became empresses. The Chinese culture and its framework was established on idolatry. They literally bowed down to their idols and erected ornaments, landmarks, and statues of their gods. When they came to the United States, how do you think they're able to open up shop so easily? 
with their cuisines and their beauty salons and their nail salons because they worship Satan in their own code for the Baphomet, just like their own code for Buddha in their land. It's all Satan worship. The devil always specialized in the exaltation of the woman to strategically use the weaker vessel to exhaust the strength of men. Have you heard of Instagram and OnlyFans? Hypocrite. How can you become legendary in your respective role? Let's talk about it. Low gang said it. The ego's too damn big. You're right. But I'm here to crank it down a few notches. Because I'm going to tell you like this. I'm all man. I'm all man. And, and just to be quite frank with you, I, I don't get upset with the emotions of a lot of you ladies. It doesn't matter. I look at a lot of y'all ladies like children, to be honest with you. I'm far beyond my years and I got wisdom flowing through me. I, it, does, it doesn't bother me when y'all go back and forth and when y'all get mad and upset. It really doesn't bother me. As I said before, this serpent leads with an address to women. He does not lead with what Yah addressed in his word. You heard him talk about how women can become legendary because this tickles the ears of the simple. This is why UP Farms has had issues and will continue to have issues because the Most High is not with them. And he has pitted them against each other because they are reprobate. But you know the issue? You know what the real issue is, though? Our women ain't team players because... They're not thinking about nation building. That's the issue. See, in other cultures, they all about their dynasty. They all about legacy. Our women can't work together and be friends and cordial because they're not about nation building. You don't believe me? Hear it from a woman. They say that they don't think they can do poly, but you have to see where the source of those thoughts came from. Because that could have been a programming. Programming that you have to change. But really, polygamy ain't for everybody really because if a man isn't truly like nation building and like has a mission and a message that they want to put out, like it's no reason to be polygamous. So it's really not fair. So when a man is about nation building, you know, like the emperor, like the kings. See, here's the issue. Our women don't look at us as kings. That's a that's another thing. Not only do our women refuse to work together, but they don't view us as the modern day uh, melanated emperors, so to speak. They don't see us that way because a lot of them are scarred by their past relationships and they look at all men like the man that they was with. And that's a problem. I'm not the guys that you was with. I'm me. I'm a man of Yah. I'm a nationman, a countryman, a journeyman, a nobleman, a dignitary, a tribal leader. You a hellbound, heretical hypocrite. That's what you are. Nevertheless, listed are some points I should have emphasized in my polygyny series. Now, the trademark of a patriarchal polygynous kingdom is the following. Now, in Deuteronomy 22, it talks about the laws that favor a man concerning great of a woman. All right? Read between the lines. Child support and alimony are not trademarked under a patriarchal polygynous kingdom. Okay? Because God is not the author of confusion. It's either matriarchal rule or a patriarchal rule. It can't be a mixture of both. Okay, Numbers chapter 5 talks about the law of jealousy, which equals a death penalty for adulterous wives who play the harlot. And as I established earlier, any type of money in exchange for concubines is considered sex trafficking today under this matriarchal kingdom. And obviously, there's no captivity or eviction from our land when we practice polygyny. Okay, we were not under captivity to the heathen and subject to his matriarchal rule. Okay, under the law of polygyny, a wife was considered a virgin. A concubine was considered a woman who had already laid with the man or had children with the man. 
Okay, there was no blurring the lines. Some may say, well, today, are we allowed to marry women who already laid with the man? Well, I'm going to get to that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Okay, remember Leviticus chapter 19, 29, which said, Do not prostitute your daughter. Cause her to be a harlot, lest the land fall into harlotry and the land become full of wickedness. Okay, so if the woman is polluted, or she's been soul tied to all these different men, then her body has become full of wickedness. All right. I listed a few examples here in the book of Second Samuel, chapter 13. Ammon forced himself on his half sister Tamar, and he caused shame to come upon her name because she was a virgin, for he laid with her. Okay, so in the eyes of God, he prostituted her because now that he refused to marry her, she wants to go to another man. She's going to have to be a concubine because the first man that laid with her did not marry her. Okay, a similar situation, but the intricacies were, of course, different. In Genesis chapter 38, Judah laid with his daughter-in-law, Tamar. Okay, because Judah was lustful and Tamar manipulated him by keeping his signet ring. And she did not wait on one of Judah's younger sons when the other two sons had already died. And Judah tried to have her burned to death for playing the harlot. But she kept his signet ring as proof that he gave her debt in exchange for sex. Okay, so he turned his daughter-in-law into a harlot. So, as you can see, there were laws in Second Samuel and Genesis, which is a 2,000-year period in between time, between the time of Judah and Ammon. Okay, so that law of Moses, although it wasn't established during the time of Judah, they were still practicing those customs then. So, and as I stated before, when God created Adam and Eve, they were already monogamous. Polygyny came into the world through sin, but I won't go too deep into that right now. Lastly, I'll touch on 1 Corinthians chapter 7, which covers the sanctification of marriage. And it does not include concubines and wives only. All right. The Apostle Paul is introducing new revelation in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And he said, because of sexual immorality, let every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband. Sexual immorality is the harlotry. They played the harlot. Israel played the harlot as a nation, and their women became defiled by men when they went into captivity, all right? So Mark the Messenger, do you support polygyny? Uh, last night, I asked you that question. Do you support polygyny as your former partners in crime have already stated that they support polygyny? And I want to open up the forum for the audience to ask the same question to you guys. Do you support polygyny? And do you support their false doctrine in them believing that Jesus Christ is not God, all right? Because they have accused you of trying to play both sides. And even before I brought your name up into this dilemma, or should I say they brought your name up into this dilemma, I already started a series titled, The Devil Always Plays Both Sides. And I hope, for the sake of transparency, that you are not doing this to protect your brand. So let me know your thoughts and enjoy the rest of your day.